In Ukraine's presidential election, a field of more than 20 has been whittled down to the final two. Many say there is little to pick between the two candidates, a feeling repeated in the polls. Both are accused of being little more than boring civil servants. However, the direction the two candidates look in for their lead and the direction they will take Ukraine in are poles apart. This election is key for the people of Ukraine. Current Prime Minister Viktor Yanukovych is the hot favourite. He hails from the Russian east of the country and has the air of a traditional Soviet functionary. His campaign office deluges the TV stations with instructions to broadcast daily updates on the things he does for the country. He has increased pensions and expressed personal concern over the harvest. His opponent, Viktor Yushchenko, is from the other western end of the Ukraine, closer to Europe. Janukovych once made a public appearance in this area, only to be plastered with eggs. In the middle of his election campaign, Yushchenko fell sick and displayed odd symptoms of having been poisoned. After lengthy treatment in Vienna, he returned to hit the campaign trail. The spin doctors were quick to lay claim to a political assassination attempt, hoping to garner sympathy from the voters. But the national media almost completely ignored the claim, leaving Yushchenko's rallies the only place where the story could prosper. His supporters expect a great deal from Yushchenko. Before succumbing to a mystery illness, the former prime minister made strong calls for an opening of the country towards the West, towards free market economy and towards democracy. We have finally managed to shake off our Soviet past. We are a democratic country, a free country. We have a free press that would be crushed in an instant in Moscow. On Channel 5 we have a very anti-government program. Moscow doesn't have that. In Russia there is just Putin's dictatorship. Here there is such strong opposition it is impossible to say who will win. Too true. The next incumbent into Kiev's Marian Palace is still an open debate. Snap polls and surveys show little between the candidates. Ukraine's last president, Leonid Kuchma, did everything in his power to pave the path for Yanukovych to follow on as his successor. Moscow has made it clear it would also prefer the malleable bureaucrat from the east of the Ukraine. Yet whether Moscow's plans for Yanukovych to win the election will succeed or fail remains uncertain. Now that the country is recovering economically, we need to consolidate democracy here too. The country is in an economic upturn. We overcame the crisis. The standard of living is getting better, but we still have no democracy. What we have now is still a mixture of new and old Soviet functionaries. We must break away from this, away from this patriarchal Russian Byzantine system, and on to more democratic forms. Orchards dominate the Ukrainian landscape. Although no longer the breadbasket of Europe it once was, agriculture is still a dominant economic force here. With the decline of the USSR went the decline of collective farming and production ground to a halt. Today the buying and selling of agricultural land is still outlawed. Growing land now has to be leased, like this 900 hectare orchard, leased for 40 years. These kind of orchards produce fruit and fruit juice for export to Russia. With 12% economic growth this year, the fruit industry here is the fastest growing in Europe. But despite such rapid improvement, the EU still refuses to classify the Ukraine as a free market economy because of differing state price regulations. What we need here is a clear and stable legal position. The law on land and agriculture is constantly being hijacked. On the 1st of January 2005, a new agricultural law should come into effect, but it's just been put back a further two years. Such instability makes it impossible for us to invest. But whatever way the election goes will be good. 
because both candidates are interested in the positive economic development of the country. Ivano-Frankovsk is the most affected province. There, the population speaks predominantly Ukrainian, and Juschenko has a clear majority. Writer Juri Andurchevic lives in this region, which was named after the Habsburg Gauls. His website features a tool that allows him to communicate with his colleagues in Kiev, Krakow, Lemberg and Cernovich. He has little time for the stereotypes of a divide between the East and the West. It's not a division between East and West, but rather between civil and uncivil society. Neo-totalitarismus. Julian Drucevic is an author and wrote an eminent paper in German entitled The Last Territory. Like most intellectuals of the country, he's rooting for the pro-Western candidate Viktor Dushenko. When this my candidate uh, wins, then uh, lasse ich äh, für das Land die gute Chance. Also dann äh, sehe ich die Perspektive eher optimistisch, obwohl ich nicht so sicher bin, dass alles sofort so optimistisch läuft und, und alles so europäisch und transparent und zivilisiert und demokratisch wird. Das ist äh, zu großes Land und äh, zu viel Problemen in diesem Land. Aber wenn äh, dieser nicht meiner Kandidat, wenn der zweite, dann, äh, dann habe ich schon überhaupt keine Hoffnung. Whether a modernizing power, represented by Janukovic, can be elected without any resistance, is still open to debate. The election campaign was unfair and extremely dirty. At least there is an alternative to the powerful Jushenko. On the 31st of October, the people themselves decide.